being productive is probably not what you think. And to demonstrate that, I want to ask you a question. And the question is, how is it that truly productive people feel at the end of their day? Okay. How do they feel at the end of their day? And if you know the answer to that question, you'll begin to realize that maybe the way you're thinking about productivity is not quite accurate. So in answering that question, we might think, well, someone who's truly productive, they would feel motivated. They would feel good about themselves. They would feel great sense of accomplishment at the end of the day. And while some of that may be true, the more interesting thing to notice about how truly productive people feel at the end of their day is this quality. How they really feel truly when they're truly productive is they feel surprised. Now, just ask yourself, have you ever considered that the goal here, if you're trying to be more productive, is to get to a point where you're feeling surprised. And if not, I want you to keep listening here because this is now what the goal is going to be for you. If you want to try this, if you want to try what I'm talking about, if you want to become truly productive, your goal at the end of each day is not to feel motivated or a sense of accomplishment or any of these things. It's to feel surprised. Why surprised? Why would they feel surprised? It's because to be truly productive, and when I say productive, I mean getting things done, but there's a creative element to it, right? It's truly productive, really doing things that matter to you. And why there's a sense of surprise is because when you're truly productive, in order to be productive in the long term consistently, we don't actually have plans. We don't use plans. Plans are not effective. We embrace something called decisiveness. And because we're using decisiveness and not big elaborate plans, there's no real set agenda on any given day. There's much less emphasis on plans. And without a plan, you're using decisiveness. You're taking things one thing, one step at a time. I don't know what I'm going to do today, but I'm taking it one step at a time. And you look back and you realize, oh, wow, through a sequence of decisions, being decisive with one thing at a time, at the end of the day, wow, look, a lot of things got done there. You just had a highly productive day and your emotional experience as a result of that is surprise. So truly productive people always feel surprised at the end of their day. How do they feel at the beginning of their day? They do not feel overwhelmed. They do not feel pressured. Because again, they don't use plans. They just know, they have the mentality that I don't have to do 17 different things today. I just need to do one thing. There's an alarm going off there. You can probably hear it in the background. Hopefully it'll stop soon. So I'm just trying to make these videos to kind of, if you're stuck with productivity and you've been procrastinating for a long time, we talk about what this alternative mindset that we're trying to cultivate, what it looks like. Because I can promise you this, it's not the old stuff you've been listening to about push yourself, come up with a big plan, stick to the plan, be more disciplined. That doesn't work. It certainly doesn't work long term. What works is not overwhelming your nervous system. Not making big elaborate plans. Making plans is a coping mechanism. And you'll notice if you've been relying on big elaborate plans, you, you make the plan when you're probably not feeling good. And okay, I have a plan now. And then the plan doesn't materialize. And now you're, you feel guilt and you're back to square one. Much more effective is the mentality of, I focus on one thing, I do one thing at a time. And you make a, a series of, of decisions. And you pull the trigger on those decisions and you're decisive. So 
you will wake up, you won't feel any pressure. There's no sense of obligation or a huge psychological load that you're carrying. And at the end of the day, you look back with surprise and also appreciation for yourself. You know, like if you have a big plan that you've made and there's 19 things on it and you only do 16. Isn't it interesting? We very rarely focus on the 16 things. We look at the three things we didn't do. This is the problem. This is the mindset shift that needs to take place. If I said, if I start my day with no agenda, sure I have needs and I have the desires and I have preferences for things, right? I acknowledge those things, absolutely. But in terms of the operating system I'm using, if the operating system is overloaded with demands, right, it's going to shut down the system. It won't work. We go into freeze. So the operating system is only I only I'm focused right now on one thing and that's it. What about after that one thing? I don't care. Nothing to do with me. All I'm focused on in, uh, focusing on is the next thing. That's it. There is no after that right now. So we don't look too far ahead of ourselves and at the end of the day just repeat you have a a, a gratitude and a sense of surprise even astonishment sometimes at what you actually managed to do through being decisive and not relying on a big elaborate plan. So I hope this is a useful video and I, I really do think it is. I think this, like what I'm saying here, it sounds ridiculously simple. Like, you know, David, don't give yourself a pat on the back. You're not coming up with uh, some brilliant new theory here. And I realize that it's not. But when we are in this conditioned mindset about hustle and push yourself you when you arrive at something truly insightful it always seems simple because of the insanity that we've been living through the truth is always simple how many times you've you've probably heard many people say in the past do one thing at a time and the other thing too is it's like um people practicing spirituality, you know, stay present, be in the moment. Okay, let me practice that. Anyway, I got 17 things, 17 things I need to do. What does, what does being in the moment mean? What does being present mean? Like, I have an aversion to some of the spiritual stuff that's online. Be present and people try to meditate, right? But what, how is that applied to your life? Being present. I think we need to kind of normalize or demystify some of these spiritual concepts. To be present is to be with one thing. So what I'm advocating here is the spiritual approach to personal productivity or living your day artistically, you could say. So... It's kind of impossible, like there's this conceptual idea of what it means to be mindful or present, and I'm not sure it actually helps anybody. So we need to bring it into the, into the real. We need to make it materially you know, understandable or applicable in our day-to-day -day lives. So to me, a big part of that is decisiveness and to do one thing at a time, to be fully with what you're doing and forget what comes after that. The plan, I say this, the plan reveals itself to you as you live your day. You kind of get into the flow of, of the flow of life. It presents itself to you. And it's based on what you need and what you want and your desires. Of course it is. But these plans that we make, they're not that helpful. They're really not. So your goal is to be surprised at yourself the end of each day. Wow, that's interesting. Look what happened. Then you're really getting places. Hope that's a useful video. And um, I think I'm going to keep talking about this because yes, it's simple, but we are so prone to forget it through the conditioning that's out there and that old mindset. 
So again, I hope that's useful. And uh, take care of yourself and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.